Ladies and gentlemen, I have the immense pleasure and privilege of introducing to this audience a member, as he describes himself, of a wonderful team of artists led by George Lucas and Lauren Kasten in the design of Yoda. Mr. Nick Maley is here with us this evening, and I'd like you, I want you to give him your warmest possible applause. Mr. Maley, sir. Mr. Maley was kind enough to mention last night that he didn't want to talk too much because he knew you were here to listen to the music. However, this being that immense honor it is, Mr. Maley, this platform and this audience is yours, sir. You know, it's now 37, 38 years since uh, I was a, a young uh, want-to-be uh, creature effects makeup artist. I'd, I'd made movies for about uh, seven years at that time, but I'd finally managed to get onto a team of really the best uh, team of creature effects builders in, in England at the time led by my old boss, Stuart Freeborn. Stuart was the old master of, of creature effects, makeup effects, uh, from going back all the way to the 30s. And so for me, I was really very nervous. Not that I was making this movie, this strange science fiction fantasy called The Star Wars, um, no one knew anything about a, a new hope at the time, but it, it, the script was called The Star Wars, and my wife-to-be uh, said, that's a strange name for a movie. <laughs> and I said, yeah, well, I, I, I'm not sure what it's going to be like, but I was thrilled to be part of that team. And it was that team that uh, built creatures for the Moss Eisley Cantina, um, we built Greedo, of course we built Chewbacca as well, and in fact, I... And uh, I actually uh, recommended my friend Peter Mayhew to play that part. In the two years that followed, we went on and did a, a movie for Gene Roddenberry for the, you know, from the other side, the Star Trek side. But we also, we also uh, made the first uh, one and a half uh, Superman movies. And then, And then we went back to make the next Star Wars. And you know, when we made that first movie, uh, George Lucas was this young 30s guy in a, in a baseball cap that sat over there by the camera. Uh, and I was impressed to be uh, working with people like Alec Guinness. And um, uh, you know, people said he was gonna be you know, the next big thing, but he wasn't, uh, uh, he wasn't the great communicator that you might expect. It was quite a quiet chap not very pushy at all. And so when we came back to the second movie, suddenly um, we'd gone from thinking that we were making a movie that, that might be for kids to knowing that we changed the way that movies were made and, and that we were making history with that second movie. And that's how I got to know this guy here. 
Uh, in the second movie, uh, my boss's son, Graham, uh, was the number two, and I was the number three on the team. And when Graham was looking after all the actors on set, and I was running the workshop, and we built four versions of Yoda, and we built the Womper, and we built the Tonton. We built the Minak and the Ugnaughts, and we put Han Solo in Carbonite. So, when I think back on that movie, I realize that those were turning points in my life. I, I often say to young people, right now I, I like to try to encourage everyone to follow their dreams because that's what I did in those, in those years when everybody said, oh, this is Nick, he's, he's a bit strange, he's trying to make movies, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, it's always hard to try and do something exceptional. It's much easier to do what everybody else does. But uh, if you don't invest in your impossible dreams, then you guarantee that they won't come true, and you guarantee that in 40 years' time you won't be standing on a stage like this, surrounded by a wonderful audience like you guys. Thank you all for your warmth. It's very touching. Thank you. Mr. Nick Maley, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nick Maley.